All right, sir, I guess I'll just have to speak to the people of my state from right here. And I'll tell you one thing, that wild horses aren't going to drag me off this floor until those people have heard everything I've got to say, even if it takes all winter. Mr. Smith goes to Washington. I think most Americans saw that movie. And really what that was all about is that he was very uncomfortable with something that was going on, with the direction uh, the Senate was moving. And he stood up for a long period of time, tried to rouse the American people to his cause. And, uh, and that, that's, uh, that's what we want to see. Far from trying to rouse the American people to a cause, the GOP minority in the 111th Congress wielded the filibuster as a weapon to help run out the clock, even when Republicans overwhelmingly supported the legislation in question. In November 2009, Republicans filibustered the Worker, Home Ownership, and Business Assistance Act, a bill to extend unemployment compensation. After days of inactivity, the bill passed 98 to nothing. No Republicans voting against it. They filibustered a bill they fully intended to support. Same goes for the credit card holders bill of rights created to protect consumers from practices like arbitrary rate increases. That bill filibustered. Then it passed 90 to 5. Or how about the Fraud Enforcement and Recovery Act, which allowed harsher punishment for financial mortgage and securities fraud. Filibustered, passed 92 to 4. Martha Johnson waited nearly eight months while the minority delayed her confirmation as administrator of the General Services Administration. End result of that? Confirmed, 94 to 2. Wait, scratch that. Senator Jim Bunning and Jeff Sessions subsequently changed their two no votes to yes votes. Eight months of filibustering, no opposition. Senator Franken was left questioning the sanity of his fellow lawmakers. This month, my colleagues forced a cloture vote. They forced a cloture vote to approve a judicial nominee for the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. She was then confirmed unanimously, 99 to 0. And yet we were forced, uh, forced to vote for a filibuster. That's nuts. It was not always like this. For the better part of 200 years, the Senate was rarely exposed to the filibuster. In fact, were it not for Aaron Burr, we may never have had any filibusters. As vice president, Burr proposed doing away with a little used Senate procedure that ended open debate on legislation. In 1806, the Senate changed the rules, creating the potential for endless debates on bills, later called filibusters. Rarely was the filibuster enacted over the next century, mostly because the majority could just change the Senate rules if the filibuster was used to thwart legislation, which is exactly what happened in 1917, when 12 anti-war senators managed to kill a military arms bill. President Woodrow Wilson urged the Democratic Senate to change the rules. They adopted cloture of debate, in which a two-thirds vote would end a filibuster. That lasted through 1975, when a procedural battle led to a compromise agreement that lowered the cloture threshold to only 60 votes. The rule change coincided with a new system that allowed two or more pieces of legislation to be considered on the floor simultaneously. The Democratic majority leader of the time, Mike Mansfield, thought the two-track system would make it harder for the minority to hold up Senate business. Instead, he wound up making a filibuster easier. Now all a senator needed to do was announce an intention to filibuster, and the issue would be set aside until a cloture vote could be held. This type of procedural filibuster was enacted 136 times by the 111th Congress in 2009 and 2010, which is why Senator Udall and other Democrats want the Senate to go back to its roots. If you're going to obstruct, uh, if you're going to uh, uh, oppose something, you have to come out of the shadows. You have to go to the floor of the Senate and tell the American people why you're slowing everything down. If the filibuster rules are not changed, Senate Republicans will continue their strategy of block and delay even for legislation they intend to support. Each tied up bill brings them closer to the goal Senate Minority Leader McConnell outlined in October. The single most important thing we want to achieve is for President Obama to be a one-term president. Let's bring in